Parkinson's disease pathophysiology, a focus on alpha-synuclein. I'm Dr. Stuart Isaacson, director of the Parkinson's Disease and Movement Disorders Center of Boca Raton, and clinical associate professor of neurology at the FIU Herbert Wertham College of Medicine. These are my faculty disclosures. This CME program is provided by North American Center for Continuing Medical Education, LLC, an HMP global company, and supported by an educational grant from Biogen. Our learning objective in this module is to describe the evolving understanding of the role of alpha-synuclein in the pathogenesis of Parkinson's disease and how it is informing the development of potentially disease-modifying therapies. Parkinson's disease has classically been understood as a degeneration primarily in the nigrostriatal dopaminergic neurons. The degeneration of these neurons results in a depletion of dopamine delivered to the basal ganglia, the striatum. And this loss of dopamine results in the classical motor symptoms of tremor, rigidity, and bradykinesia. Pathologically, diagnosis has been based on the appearance of Lewy body inclusions in surviving neurons in the substantia nigra. And we can see this loss of neurons in the nigra with Lewy bodies in remaining neurons. Replacement of dopamine is effective treatment, both initially and throughout the course of the disease, providing symptomatic benefit and reduced morbidity and mortality. However, nigral degeneration is only one part of Parkinson's disease, as are motor symptoms, as we become more and more aware of the predominance of non-motor symptoms in Parkinson's disease. The Brocks have suggested that the progression of neurodegeneration occurs years before motor symptoms emerge, nigral degeneration in stage three. Initially, in stages one and two, there's degeneration in autonomic neurons and olfactory neurons. In stage three, it affects the motor nigral region and then ascends into subcortical and cortical regions in later stages. And more recently, the Brocks have identified that degeneration may actually begin in the enteric nervous system surrounding the gut and then ascend rostrally, perhaps through the vagus nerve. It makes us wonder, when does Parkinson's disease begin? We're aware from epidemiological studies that constipation is a major risk factor for Parkinson's disease, emerging perhaps decades before motor symptoms emerge. Loss of smell and REM sleep behavior disorder are also common, beginning five or 10 years prior to motor symptoms. REM sleep behavior disorder is when people act out their dreams while they're sleeping. In the year prior to Parkinson's disease diagnosis, anxiety, depression, and perhaps excessive daytime sleepiness is also common. And when motor symptoms emerge, a diagnosis clinically can be made, a biomarker we still don't have. And often over time, we're able to refine and confirm the diagnosis. We do not yet understand what causes Parkinson's disease. We become very aware of a number of genes that in individual families may lead to Parkinson's disease at times of an earlier onset and at other times indistinguishable from idiopathic or sporadic disease. Some of these genes like LARC2 and GBA are especially common in certain ethnicities, including the Ashkenazi Jewish population. To date, over 20 genes have been identified. A number of environmental risk factors have also been studied, including exposure to pesticides, rural living, and use of well water for drinking. Together, perhaps, the genes in the environment combine to a pathogenic mechanism that involves oxidative stress, inflammation, excited toxicity, mitochondrial dysfunction, and protein aggregation of a variety of different proteins. And together, this may lead to neuronal degeneration, perhaps including programmed or apoptotic cell death. In 1997, the first gene causing familial Parkinson's disease was identified after years of study. This gene was called a synuclein gene. It demonstrated autosomal dominant inheritance in this large Italian and Greek family. 
it encodes a protein called alpha-synuclein. And alpha-synuclein may be involved in synaptic processing, perhaps plasticity, although the precise physiological function of this protein is unknown. It's estimated that perhaps 1% of all protein in the brain may be part of alpha-synuclein. A number of different mutations, duplications, and a triplication has since been identified. There appears to be a gene dosing effect with earlier onset and disease severity with increased dose. And mutations occur in the N-terminus region, a particular region of the synuclein gene that may be involved in aggregation of this protein. Alpha-synuclein is an important protein also because shortly after identification of the mutation, antibodies were raised and used for immunohistochemistry and remarkably stained Lewy bodies, identifying alpha-synuclein as a major component of the Lewy body, the pathological hallmark allowing diagnosis of Parkinson's disease at autopsy. Alpha-synuclein antibodies stain not only Lewy bodies, but neuritic processes arising from a variety of neurons in the central, autonomic, and enteric nervous systems. And goes along with the Brock hypothesis that the Brocks have used alpha-synuclein staining to demonstrate the proposed propagation of neurodegeneration and may also reflect the widespread neurodegeneration underlying motor and non-motor symptoms in Parkinson's disease. For very long, we've been aware of Lewy bodies throughout the neuroaxis at autopsy. And now we know that those Lewy bodies contain alpha-synuclein in the enteric, autonomic, and central nervous systems. More recently, attempts to demonstrate alpha-synuclein in clinically available tissues as a biomarker have been undertaken with demonstration of alpha-synuclein in the salivary glands, in colonic biopsies, and more recently, and perhaps most importantly clinically, in skin biopsies surrounding autonomic nerves. Alpha-synuclein belongs to a family of synucleins that exist in three forms, alpha, beta, and gamma-synuclein. Only alpha-synuclein accumulates in Lewy bodies. The alpha-synuclein gene is expressed on chromosome four, coding for a cytosolic protein of approximately 140 amino acids. It exists in two different conformations, an alpha helical conformation and beta sheet. It's mostly expressed at the neuronal level in presynaptic terminals and neuritic processes and is degraded through the proteosomal pathways. Importantly, the alpha-synuclein protein contains three regions, the amino terminus or N-terminus region comprising residues one to 60, a central hydrophobic region of residues 61 to 95, that's also been called the NAC or non-alpha beta uh, region, and a negatively charged carboxyl terminal region. Importantly, the N-terminus region can form alpha helical aggregates on binding to lipid membranes. The physiological role of alpha-synuclein has been explored and information suggests that it's associated with lipid membranes and seems to localize near vesicular membranes external to the synaptic vesicle. Some have suggested that it may act as a break, regulating the pool of released dopamine in dopaminergic neurons, such that it binds to the outside vesicular membrane. And then when it comes away from it, the vesicular membrane is able through snare proteins, expel dopamine, excitotosing it into the synapse. And then when the vesicle comes back, alpha-synuclein attaches to it again, in essence, acting as a break. Ongoing studies are trying to better elucidate the precise physiological roles of alpha-synuclein. So in summary, alpha-synuclein is an important protein in Parkinson's disease because it is a major protein component of Lewy bodies, the pathological hallmark of the disease. It seems to be found at the synapse and to exist normally in a soluble non-folded form. But in Parkinson's disease, alpha-synuclein aggregates into fibrils to form Lewy bodies and Lewy neurites. The aggregation of alpha-synuclein is enhanced by N-terminal mutations in the synuclein gene that's been associated with familial Parkinson's disease. Importantly, in 2008, there was a demonstration that alpha-synuclein might have 
prion-like properties and be able to transmit or propagate from cell to cell. This was observed in a Parkinson's disease brain at autopsy that had received fetal tissue transplants of dopaminergic neurons. And there was the observation that Lewy bodies were found in the transplanted grafted tissue, suggesting transmission of at least alpha-synuclein from the Parkinson's disease brain to the grafted fetal tissue. This led to a number of attempts to identify whether alpha-synuclein has propagation properties and is prion-like. The Brock stages suggest this propagation from the enteric nervous system into the brainstem and into the brain. We have the identification in cell culture that neurons can both secrete alpha-synuclein and also take it up from the extracellular space. The secretion of neurons is non-vesicular mediated though. And we also have information from animal studies. In these animal studies, transgenic mice were developed carrying the mutation seen in families with Parkinson's disease. These transgenic mice expressed the mutant alpha-synuclein initially in the enteric neurons and then ascending up into the brainstem and into the brain. They developed uh, phenotypes that went along with some of this pathology. More recently, a mouse model trying to replicate REM sleep behavior disorder, the prodromal symptom identified in many patients with Parkinson's disease was attempted by injecting preformed alpha-synuclein fibrils into the sublateral dorsal tegmental nucleus. This led to REM sleep behavior-like behaviors in the mice, and surprisingly, to ongoing degeneration that seemed to progress outside of this nucleus into the substantia nigra, the olfactory bulb, and the enteric nervous system. This may replicate some of the pathology and clinical symptoms and give a mouse model that shows a phenoconversion that progresses from a prodromal REM sleep behavior disease phenotype to a motor Parkinson's disease phenotype. It makes us wonder about the pathways that link neurodegeneration in Parkinson's disease. Through alpha-synuclein, we've learned a lot about some of the pathophysiology that reflects oxidative stress, mitochondrial fragmentation and dysfunction, and other problems. It implicates other genes that have been seen in other families with Parkinson's disease, including early onset genes like PINK1 and Parkin, LOC2, and GBA. And it begins to form a pathway complex that suggests that there are different places where we might be able to intervene therapeutically to modify disease and prevent or at least delay progression to cell death. We know that overexpression of alpha-synuclein wild type of variant is toxic to dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra in this uh, mouse model that was developed. We also recognize that alpha-synuclein fibrils have toxicity. As lipid-associated structures, they can disrupt the integrity of cell membranes, mitochondrial membranes, and other intracellular membranes, and lead to damage and altered release of neurotransmitters. It can lead to altered trafficking and degradation of proteins, and it can lead to energy dysmetabolism, disrupting mitochondrial function, leading to oxidation and proteosomal damage with the buildup of a variety of different proteins. This type of cohesive view of trying to understand the disease mechanism in Parkinson's disease brings in environmental and genetic factors. Looking at alpha-synuclein as being part of this complex with misfolded proteins that can be toxic, that can also increase oxidation involving dopamine and mitochondrial dysfunction, proteosomal damage, buildup of different proteins, and as a result, programmed in other cell death leading to ongoing and progressive neurodegeneration. And with alpha-synuclein being a protein that may propagate from cell to cell throughout the neuroaxis, it may lead on to progressive neurodegeneration that becomes more and more widespread over time. 
it's opened up a vista of novel therapeutic strategies for Parkinson's disease with a number of different possible targets seeking to delay progression or stop progression. We might think about targeting extracellular alpha-synuclein with antibodies trying to prevent cell-to-cell -cell transmission. We're targeting the uh, fibrillization of alpha-synuclein with drugs that prevent it from aggregating in that manner. We can target intracellular alpha-synuclein to try to improve more normal functioning of this protein. We're targeting neuroinflammation or oxidative stress or excitotoxicity and gene therapy using ways of trying to replace abnormal genes with normal genes are also undergoing study. Hopefully over the next several years, we'll see new therapies emerge that don't just treat the underlying motor and non-motor symptoms of the disease, but aim to modify the progression and ultimately stop the progression. And if we could develop a biomarker and begin a disease modifying therapy before uh, clinical phenotypes emerge, hopefully prevent the development of Parkinson's disease.